What are the best exercises for mild scoliosis and what are the exercises that can actually help? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine that also rotates into the concavity. This rotation is what makes scoliosis unique as opposed to just being bad posture or being out of alignment. The part of diagnosing scoliosis involves further classifying uh, based upon key conditions or variables. Typically, the patient's age, the condition type, the curve location, and also the severity. Mild scoliosis patients have a Cobb angle that's measured between 10 and 25 degrees. So this 15 degree window, whether it's 11 degrees, 15 degrees, 24 degrees, will all be considered mild scoliosis. Now, a mild scoliosis has a relatively low risk of progression during growth, but there's still a risk of progression, meaning we think about 30% of these cases will progress every single time a patient grows. In the adult stage, we believe curves progress, but relatively slow. The average 50 degree curve progresses one degree a year in the adult life. So a curve that's considered mild may progress a quarter degree. A quarter degree year to year to year isn't a lot, but over 20, 30, 40 years could be significant. So when we measure a Cobb angle, this is the way we actually determine the size of the curve. And this is a key piece of information that we actually shape the care plans around when we try to actually take care of scoliosis. Cobb angles are actually measured from an x-ray and it tells you how far or how big the scoliosis actually is. And the higher or the bigger the angle, the more severe it is. So a mild scoliosis, like I mentioned, will be between 10 and 25 degrees, moderate between 25 and 40, severe is typically 40 plus, and very severe is something I like to say is 80 plus degrees. So where a scoliosis is actually diagnosed doesn't necessarily mean where it's going to stay. So a scoliosis that is mild could become moderate and a moderate scoliosis could become severe. And this can worsen over time, like I mentioned, either during growth or just with gravity over time during the adult stage. How severe a scoliosis is typically means how we actually go about treating it. As curves become more severe, we typically need more aggressive and more invasive treatment. Typically, as curves progress from mild to moderate, moderate to severe, when they start here hitting the severe recommendations or, or categories, this is when you're typically recommended surgery, which is a very invasive, non-functional treatment. But every severe case of scoliosis at one time was mild. So treating mild scoliosis cases could prevent this progression from ever occurring. So we normally recommend treating curves as small or as soon as possible. Now, exercises could be a form of treatment for treating mild scoliosis. While there's never any guarantee when it comes to treating scoliosis, we do know treating scoliosis in a smaller size what typically means there's less limits that can be achieved. So therefore, mild scoliosis treatment results are typically much better and typically are much more likely to get reductions and improvements than if they're let to progress to the severe stage. Now, modern conservative treatment typically uses a combination of physical therapy, exercises, and sometimes corrective bracing as, as a, all the approaches to reduce it. But however, exercises are a key facet to the treatment. Now, we know exercises can help mild scoliosis scoliosis, not by just helping maintaining the strength and flexibility of the scoliosis, but it can also help strengthen muscles that can be helping stabilizing critical areas of the scoliosis to try to slow down or stop progression. While no exercise alone can, while there's no exercise alone that can correct the scoliosis, we know when scoliosis exercises are specific, meaning when we take general exercises and we prescribe them to a patient, as opposed to scoliosis specific exercises, that are actually designed to manage the person's scoliosis that we see on x-ray, that this type of exercise is much more effective in actually managing and ma managing a scoliosis than just a general exercise like core strengthening, sit-ups, back strengthening, general ca calisthenic exercises, weightlifting, those kinds of things. So general core strength exercises versus scoliosis-specific exercises are very, very different. In order for a scoliosis exercise to be considered scoliosis-specific, it must be designed design based upon what we see on an x-ray. So it must be prescribed uniquely to that patient based upon what we see in x-rays to structurally mirror or structurally change the scoliosis by performing these exercises. Where general exercises are more general for, for anybody, for general back strengthening, general core strengthening, general core flexibility, those types of things. Those type of exercises, even though we believe they have a benefit, we don't know how much they're gonna actually slow down or stop scoliosis progression. Scoliosis-specific exercises not only address the muscles that are associated, but they also 
try to improve something called body-brain communication or brain-body communication, something we call a neuromuscular reactivity, where it's trying to resense the, in, the normal straight alignment of the body relative to the brain and starting to activate certain areas to improve this function and help improve posture. Well, general exercises normally don't do that. They're just trying to strengthen a particular muscle by performing a specific exercise. So the most important exercises for mild scoliosis are scoliosis specific exercises or something that we call SSEs, where general exercises, they could have a benefit, but how much benefit they have is really unclear. So if you want a very effective form of scoliosis exercises for your mild scoliosis, best thing for you to do is consult with a physician and get something that's scoliosis specific. However, if you want some general exercises or stretches that could be beneficial for or mild scoliosis, here's a few of them. Seated butterfly stretches. These stretches can help strengthen the hip flexor and they can help improve overall low body strength and flexibility. Cervical flexion exercises help stretches the muscles of the neck and the cervical spine, and they can help you support the weight of the head over the torso to help achieve better balance. Lumbar extension exercise is very similar to the cervical flexion exercises, but it's mostly for the lumbar spine. And it's to help keep the lumbar spine strong and flexible because the lumbar vertebra actually address, bear most of the weight of the trunk. So therefore keeping this area strong can help keep, help prevent the body from maintaining and helping maintain normal posture. And also chest expander exercise can help maintain a normal thoracic curvature, meaning kyphosis. This normal thoracic kyphosis is important, especially for thoracic scoliosis cases. So we know the best exercise for mild scoliosis are exercises that are prescribed specifically based upon the curve presentation on an x-ray. This is called a scoliosis-specific exercise. These are by far the best, but they must be individually prescribed and must be individually taught based upon what you see on the x-rays. Other types of x-rays, general exercises, can be beneficial, but they're normally just general exercises to help improve core strength and well-being. Now, there's one other type of exercise, and we call this isometric exercises, and these can be done in asymmetrically based upon curve presentation. And here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we use all three. We use scoliosis specific exercises, we use isometric exercises, asymmetrically done in specific regions, and we use general core strengthening and exercises to help improve overall body strength. By combining all these three exercises, you'll get the benefit of each one uniquely for that person to provide the very best results possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.